Coming up on the Angus Report, Montana wildfires sweep across the state. Angus Regional Manager Kurt Kangas gives an update. You know, this week we are hotter and drier than we have been uh, almost for the last three weeks, and you're seeing a lot more fire activity because of that. Drought assistance heads to the Dakotas and Montana. How you can help. NAFTA negotiations have started in D.C., but what does that mean for beef exports? Our message has been pretty clear to the administration from the beginning, and that really is do no harm. Leave all of the sectors that impact the cattle industry alone. With strong markets, should you keep or sell replacement heifers this fall? And we travel to South Dakota and check in on the Angus Foundation's Talon intern. This is the Angus Report. Hello and welcome to the Angus Report. I'm Bob Cervera. Our top news this week, wildfires are spreading across much of Montana and other western states, leaving cattle producers with blackened pastures. With much of the state badly affected by the current drought and no rain in the imminent forecast, fire officials say they expect fires to get significantly bigger before they're put out. Angus Regional Manager Kurt Kangas has been across the state and says, while cattle losses have been minimal, pasture may be limited the next few years. Currently, we have, uh, in the state of Montana, we've had right around 5,582,000 acres of ground burnt. Um, that's going to include the, the largest fire to date, which is a lodgepole fire, uh, which was up near Jordan, Montana, in uh, central Montana. The Lolo Peak fire would have started mid-July and, you know, just really started to get cranking up in August. Um, but it's burning through heavy, heavy timber right now, as opposed to, the, say, the lodgepole fire, which... Uh, while it was a devastating fire, fire was fairly short-lived at, at less than seven days, um, but it burned 270,000 acres in those seven days. You know, this week we are hotter and drier than we have been uh, almost for the last three weeks, and you're seeing a lot more fire activity because of that. The logical fire for this mainly is, you know, it, 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 it displaced a lot of cow ground. Um, a lot of BLM ground got burnt in, those, in that fire, which would be a lot of lease ground for commercial cattle guys. When that ground burned, you know, barring a, a major rain eventually, which we have not happened, have had happen, we won't see green grass in that region until next April. Um, it's a large span for guys to go without feed. Um, obviously, a lot of haystacks got burnt up. Certainly, we'll probably see people weaning earlier. Uh, they'll, they'll hit the cap. They'll sell barns, people that don't pre-contract. I think that we'll see feedlots fill up pretty fast in the in the winter time that when these guys start running out of ground that they can graze, whether it's CRP ground that has been that they've opened back up for emergency purposes, it's gonna take a we get a bad winter and those guys are gonna have to find be a little more creative in their options for wintering their cows. The Montana Stock Growers Association is coordinating relief efforts and a complete list of donations needed are found online at mtbeef.org. This year, President Trump said he intended to commence negotiations with Canada and Mexico in regards to the North American Free Trade Agreement, or NAFTA. Recently, the first round of negotiations took place in Washington, D.C. The United States seeks to support higher paying jobs in the U.S. and to grow the U.S. economy by improving trade opportunities with Canada and Mexico. However, not everyone agrees that NAFTA needs changing. Kent Backus of the National Cattlemen's Beef Association says their message to the administration, leave NAFTA alone. Our message has been pretty clear to the administration from the beginning, and that really is do no harm. Leave the U.S. beef and cattle sectors, leave, leave all of the sectors that impact the cattle industry alone, because we've really benefited from NAFTA. And because of NAFTA, we've seen our exports to both Canada and Mexico average about $1 billion annually. We cannot afford to lose that access or jeopardize that access. And quite frankly, NAFTA has been good for our competitors in those countries, too, so they don't have any interest in seeing any changes to the beef and cattle terms. So we'd like this to move as quickly as possible, keep those negotiations narrow in scope, and then let's move on to more important markets like Japan, where we could see some potential losses if we don't get a free trade agreement in the very near future. Quite frankly, uh, you know, I think there's a lot of optimism about moving the negotiations as quickly as possible. Uh, but realistically, we're, we're probably looking at several months here. I know that there's a goal of trying to conclude the negotiations by the end of the year. At least that's uh, some of the goals of uh, folks in the industry. That's certainly what we would like to see. But just given uh, the overall size of NAFTA, the fact that you have 
industries uh, today that didn't exist when NAFTA was first negotiated. There's a lot of ground they got to cover, and there's also uh, a lot of issues that they're going to have to discuss. Backus says industry leaders are optimistic negotiations will be finalized within the next few months and hope to present a fresh NAFTA agreement before the first of the year. Visit beefusa.org for more information. While the drought continues across areas of the Midwest and Western states, it's important to know which tools and resources are available to help manage cow herds through this tough time. Several relief efforts have been coordinated in the worst areas of drought. North and South Dakota Stockmen's Associations have launched the Hope for Heartland Relief Fund to help cattlemen and women offset feed and transportation costs. Visit ndstockman.org for more information. An additional hay lottery has also been established. People looking to make a donation of hay should contact the drought hotline at area code 701-425-8454. Supplies will be collected at the North Dakota State University campus in Fargo, North Dakota. Producers are also urged to contact their local Natural Resources Conservation Service office to apply for the Environmental Quality Incentives Program, or EQIP, to assist with grazing deferment, fencing, water facility development, critical area planting, and cover crop costs. Contact your local NRCS office for more details, and you can also find more drought management tips in the latest edition of the Angus Beef Bulletin. In today's beef market, cattle are sold and shipped across the country and across the world, thanks to modern technology. However, an animal originating from the South might not thrive when shipped to the Midwest. Ruluka Matiscu of the University of Florida is working to isolate specific genes in order to develop data that can predict an animal's ability to adapt to certain environmental regions. You cannot manage the environment. There is nothing you can do uh, to protect those animals from the environmental stress. As um, the predictions are, the climate is changing. It's getting hotter and hotter. So those animals are going to experience hotter and hotter environments. So it is important that they are a we are selecting for animals that are able to adapt to that environment. When you have tropical and subtropical regions and you're going to have increased temperatures and high humidity, you're looking at an animal which is able to maintain the body temperature within a normal limit. So then they can put the energy into productive traits instead of putting the energy in trying to maintain a normal body temperature. Visit beefimprovement.org for more information. During the summer and fall months, pasture quality typically begins deteriorating and in order for cattle to continue to meet all nutrient requirements, producers might need to begin supplementing. Research shows that as forage quality decreases, rumen passage rate also decreases, meaning it takes longer for rumen microbes to digest that tough forage. Therefore, as pasture quality decreases, cattle actually begin to eat less of it. By introducing a source of high quality protein, cattle can better utilize the low quality forage and still meet their nutrient requirements. Troy Waltz of the University of Nebraska says, in the event of pasture shortage, producers can limit feed and still meet the cow's requirements. By increasing protein amounts, producers can offer less low quality forage, yet still meet nutrient demands, and in turn, reduce feed waste. Protein sources come in a variety of forms, such as lick tubs, grain, and even high quality hay. Contact your local extension agent or veterinarian to develop a supplementation plan that fits your operation. Rain or shine, drought or floods, providing an adequate mineral mix for cattle is essential in order to meet their nutrient requirements. Jason Smith from the University of Tennessee says, mineral deficiency can cause issues in reproduction, growth, immune functions, and hoof health, just to name a few. In order to prevent the issues, Smith says simply dropping a bag of trace mineral salt in the pasture won't quite do the trick. Depending on where in the country cattle are located, varying levels of trace minerals such as copper, zinc, manganese, and selenium need to be adjusted in order to allow cattle to reach their full potential. Smith advises providing continuous access to a complete free choice mineral supplement rather than providing individual mineral ingredients. Consult your local veterinarian to develop a complete mineral package that's tailor-made for your area. When we return, will you keep or sell replacement heifers this fall? We talk to Lee Schultz of Iowa State University while he dives into the data. 
Then the Angus Foundation's talent intern, Jessica Jansen, shares her experiences out in South Dakota. Visit angus.media to continue watching this episode of the Angus Report. Forward. It's more than a direction. It's mandatory. Because the beef business rewards the progressive, the doers, the ones who know what it takes to go easy on cattle and never set them back. So set your eyes on the horizon, turn your back to the wind, and move your herd the only way you know. Forward. Beast of vaccines. Always ahead. Today's beef consumer has questions. BQA has the answers. Your Beef Quality Assurance Certification allows you to share a story that assures customers that you are responsibly raising a safe, wholesome, and healthy beef supply. Becoming BQA certified just became even more convenient with a new interactive training experience that is online and available 24-7. So what are you waiting for? Get started today by visiting bqa.org. Hi, I'm Red Stegall. I'd like to invite you to the 2017 Angus Convention, November 4th through the 6th, right here in historic Fort Worth. It's also open to all cattle producers, whether you own Angus cattle or not. Now you'll enjoy four days of Texas hospitality, a ranch tour, an industry-leading trade show, and some of the best educational opportunities in the business. But best of all, you'll get to be with your Angus family, celebrating the successes of the breed and charting a course for the future. Did you know that your checkoff works to grow demand for U.S. beef in more than 80 countries? Did you know export markets add more than $250 in value to each head? Did you know your checkoff works to develop, defend, and dispel in an effort to expand international markets? While you're focused on managing your beef business, your checkoff is developing new foreign markets and defending those where U.S. beef is currently sold. Get to know your checkoff at mybeefcheckoff.com.